so we have to head for our fast pass for what is it flight of passage yeah pretty sure it's flight of passage just look at this I mean I really cannot and I understand that uh, you know I'm sure a majority of the designs of the fake what would you call it fauna is based directly off the movie so it's the movie the visual designers of the movie that should get the credit but you know honestly whoever was involved with all of this it's just I just this is so I mean look at this waterfall dude look at this waterfall this is crazy. More Disney ducks. Okay, where is the ride? Baby Sam. Banshees. Is that a banshee? What is that? I haven't seen the movie, so I don't want to know what a banshee looks like. Is that a dragon? I don't think so. So we're still looking for the banshee. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen in other vlogs already that Pandora does not have any traditional signage, really. You're supposed to look at the big wicker signs, which, okay, that looks more like a dragon. getting distracted taking pictures okay so we're going into the queue for flight of the banshee now which I'm a little nervous about because I've heard that people are having a hard time if they've got larger calves fitting on the ride you're literally straddling a bench there is zero reason why in your design you have to make the sizing restrictive in any way Yeah, this is giving me halo feels. I think we're annoyingly going to compare everything to fandoms we're actually familiar with. Wow. Systems ready. Please make sure you can all see the screen. Okay, Dr. Stevens, they're ready. Can everyone see me? Great. Welcome to the Avatar program. Soon, you're going to have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi ride of passage, flying on the back of this powerful animal called an Ikron, or as we call it, a Banshee. The way you're going to do this is by being matched to something called an Avatar. And I'm here to help you guys get ready. Uh, let's start the decon. Initiating GMR decon. Stay still over your number. You're not gonna feel a thing. <laughs> You're doing great. Almost done here. They're all clear. Great. Now let's go over how all this works. Like I said before, you're going to be matched to these things called avatars, which look a lot like the Navi. They're created by blending human DNA and Navi DNA. Over a generation ago, this enormous company called the RDA created a lot of damage to the area through their bad mining practices and conflicts with the Navi. Just like on Earth, it can take decades for ecosystems to recover. One way to understand what's going on with an ecosystem is to study what are called keystone species. The Banshee is one of these important animals. 
Dr. Ogden is the foremost expert on studying the Ikran and has spent years researching. <laughs> to get you flying on a banshee, we need to find each of you an avatar. Um, let's uh, prep the genetic sampling. I'm on it. Okay. <laughs> all right. You've all been matched with avatars. I got uh, Ooh, looks like they're ready for you in the next room. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least. Thank you. You've all made it. Uh, it's important that you can all see me, so move a little if you can't. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. Jackie Ogden from the Pandora Conservation Initiative. Connecting to an Ikran and flying on its back is an incredibly important rite of passage they call Ikni Maya. With permission from the Navi and in partnership with Alpha Centauri Expeditions, we can now bring this amazing experience to you. You'll experience the breathtaking beauty of Pandora but you might also face some of its greatest challenges. Some of this flight might be intense, but trust your guide and be brave. The feeling over here is wild, like, What is it? What is it? We don't know. Who knows? Into the gift shop. Oh, I cannot wait for Star Wars Land. where you make your own custom doll, I believe. It makes it based off of your beautiful face. Look. Here, switch. You're better at this part. No, I'm not. Just come on. Check out this hoodie. I would totally buy this. And then it's got the cool like avatar handprint. I can get it out. Check this out. That's the price tag. $42.99, that's not bad. Got, like keychains. What are you? Oh, flashlight. 13. Slow, dramatic pan. 18. Cards. That's pretty cool. Seven dollars. A glow compound set. Oh, I need it. It's it's a glow sand with avatar molds. Oh, I hit the thing. Thirty bucks. Oh, and it comes with like little. That's cool. No way. Look at him! Look at him! He's not in focus. Okay, these guys. 
<laughs> oh, I need this for work. Forget a stress ball. Um, I would totally wear this shirt. That's amazing. 22 bucks. And it's actually thick shirt material. It's not one of those costume hoodies. For the uh, orange banshee. It has a little cape for his wings. And they got like little zoo bucket animals. This is 13. The theming in here is really cool. Look, it's an MJ. I want I want one of these for work. Me too. Because you know how hilarious it'd be if somebody's walking by your desk and you just poke them up around the corner? I Sixteen. I would buy that. Wait, I'm not doing it right. There we go. Yeah, you gotta get them really going. I love this. I know I want one really bad. Like they even got the not so nice one. Oh, look at that kite. Check that out. It's like a whole nest of banshees up there. It's awesome. Oh no! They have an avatar bubble wand. You guys know how much I love these brown. Twenty bucks. I would get the avatar one. It's uh, textured really cool. Look at that guy. Fifty-five. You know. I would be very tempted because this thing is really cool and we're going to be going to the beach a lot and I think this would be an amazing kite to take, but we'll see. I think we should head out it's pretty busy in here and I wanted to taste some. Oh, is he floppy? No. Yes, he is. Oh, a lot. He's mostly articulate. Oh, he's got metal in him? Yeah. Ooh, what's this thing? Where did you wander? MJ. Build your own wind trader necklace. 20 bucks. That would be fun to do. That's really neat. Can we buy some unobtainium? So cool. probably disgusting and sweaty and gross because it's really hot out today. It's definitely in the 90s and it is Florida, um, the avatar portion of Florida. Um, Kat is inside right now getting probably a drink or something for us to try. We decided we would try at least one thing, excuse me, while we're here. Um, we just got off of Flight of the Banshee. I liked it. Like, there were times when I was writing it that I actually cried because uh, the immersion was really good. A couple of times I shouted because <laughs> I was just taken aback and like startled and really thought that we were gonna crash into these animals that we were like flying past. I should probably back up and explain. Um, Boy of the Banshee is Avatar's more active ride. You're straddling this bench that's supposed to represent um, a banshee that you're riding through uh, basically virtual reality. It is a mostly stationary ride, kind of in the zone of like, I haven't read, uh, written Soren, um, but people have been comparing it to Soren. To me, it felt like, you know the portion of um, Harry Potter, the Theater Forbidden Journey, where you're zooming across the Quidditch field and stuff, kind of felt more about 
like that portion of, of the ride because it was more flight based. Um, but you don't move as much around as you do on um, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. You are sitting on a bench that just kind of rotates a little bit. It's not, it doesn't move as much as Simpsons. Um, there's a lot more uh, atmospheric detail, like they spray you with water. The scents are really strong. Um, the visuals on the ride were absolutely breathtaking. There is no doubt about that. Like, there's so much going on that you could probably ride that ride 300 times in a row and still catch little details that you did the first time. The ride itself though was kind of a little like, if you were expecting a ride, you're gonna be disappointed. Um, it doesn't really feel like it's revolutionized anything. It's not something that really makes you feel like they took theme park rides to a new level. It kind of just feels like kind of safe price range and um, function-wise of a ride, but it's still absolutely worth riding. I think if you go in expecting experience more than you're expecting a ride, I don't think you'll be very disappointed. One thing I am frustrated about is the fact that anyone who's larger than me will not fit in that ride. Literally, um, I just barely clicked in on both my legs and my back. And look, I get it. Some rides are not going to be accessible to someone of my size because of um, necessary designs. Uh, for example, kid coasters, which are, you know, structured for small little kid bodies are not going to necessarily fit me, and that's cool. But for something that is literally um, designed, it's literally just a bench. I'm really confused as to why that they felt it necessary to make it so restrictive sizing-wise. Okay, so I just realized that we never got Kat's opinion on um, the Banshee ride. And also I wanted to mention that um, when I was talking to a cast member earlier, they talked about the fact that one of the Imagineers just got an email not too long ago saying that the ride vehicles need to be sized up. Um, they did the design based off of some rides in uh, Shanghai, I think uh, he, he said, and uh, it's not quite big enough for the general audience over here. So that will be addressed eventually. Um, so that's really, really nice to hear. Yeah, no, I really liked it. Um, I don't know why people were disappointed in it because I think that's the best simulator ride that I've been on so far. It didn't make me motion sickened and I really liked the, I know that the size of the person sitting is kind of an issue until they adjust the ride, but I did like how the, um, the ride how you sit in the ride. Like the entire time I'm like, okay, where's my light cycle? But um, I don't know, the weird thing that I thought was interesting about it is because you're like, you're supposed to be sitting on the Banshee, it breathes. Did you notice that? Yeah. Yeah, with... the ride breathes. So the entire time I'm like, I feel so guilty for sitting on you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but the, um, the 4D parts of it, like the smells and then the water elements were really cool. And I really liked um, the parts where we were just diving down. I wish that there'd been more of that, but overall, it was really, it was really fun. I enjoyed it a lot. I would definitely, I, I would wait an hour and a half or more to ride that again, uh, like coming in the summer and stuff, just because it was so nice. And I really loved the queue.
Wow. I mean, wow.
the river ride, the boat ride. I, I literally don't know <laughs> what it's called. Um, and it was pretty cool. Like it was very short. Um, to me, some of the screens were a little obvious, but again, it's kind of like with everything else here, the fake fauna alone is like really, really cool. Um, the light, uh, the lighting that was going on in the ride was really, really good. Um, I don't know, it's just a really short, just basic boat ride. I feel bad for the people that are going to be waiting five and six hours to ride. Uh, both of these rides because they're so short really honestly but um, it's definitely very relaxing kind of like the entire rest of this area is just really it's very chill yeah very chill I like I like the boat ride I wish that they had more animatronics of the creatures versus mm -hmm. instead of just the avatars the screens yeah. were cool like when the when you come around a corner and the viper wolf is there that was really cool but like um, she had mentioned some of the screens because of how big they are if they put yeah. more um, plants and fauna around I think that it would have helped hide it a little bit better mm -hmm. But they're still doing it a thousand times better than Universal. Yeah, it really, honestly, and I'm not even trying to be, like, salty. It definitely feels like they used up nine-tenths of their budget on everything outside. Which is fine. I really yeah. am sad that we're not going to get to see everything at nighttime. Um, yeah. But I am looking forward to seeing everything at nighttime. One of the um, nature scouts showed us that if you put, put your hands on some of the flowers, which don't touch them, just have your hands around them. Um, it blows in the dark already. 